Let's learn about graphing a vector function. We'll start off with a simple vector function in two-dimensional space. Suppose we have a vector function described by 3 cosine of t i hat plus 2 sine of t j hat. What would the curve of this look like? Well, remember, this vector function is a vector whose components are functions. We see that cosine in the x component and sine in the, in the y component means that the domain of our function is all real values of t. Let's go ahead and plot this function in the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Well, what do you think we can do with this? Well, let's look at the, the two components. So here is the x component, which is a function of t, and the y component is also a function of the parameter t. So x as a function of t is equal to 3 cosine of t, y as a function of t is equal to 2 sine of t. Some of you might recognize that this would be an equation of an ellipse, especially if we were in polar coordinates. And you'd be right, this would generate an ellipse except for this ellipse is a vector-valued function, so the ellipse will have an orientation. This is what we can do. Let's see if we can establish a relationship between x and y in the rectangular coordinate system so that we could see more clearly that this is going to generate a curve that's an ellipse. Since we have sine and cosine, I'm very influenced to try to get something in this form. So try to get sine squared of t plus cosine squared of t equals to 1, because this is a relationship that I know that I have between sine and cosine. Since x is a function of cosine, and since y is a function of sine, I think we're able to get this relationship. For x, let's divide both sides by 3. x over 3 is equal to cosine of t. For y, let's divide both sides by 2. y over 2 is equal to sine of t. Well, we have cosine of t and sine of t. We know that cosine squared t plus sine squared of t is equal to 1. This means that x over 3, quantity squared, plus y over 2, quantity squared, is equal to 1. This clearly is the equation of an ellipse, where the major axis has a has a radius of 3, and the minor axis has a radius of 2. Putting this in an xy coordinate system, we could sketch our ellipse to look like this. Let's try that again. There is our ellipse. However, this doesn't yet describe our vector function because curves produced from vector functions have an orientation. For example, are we going counterclockwise around this curve? Or are we going clockwise around this curve? 
To see, let's just go ahead and take a couple of points on our curve. Let's start off with just some simple points. Since we are going, since t is ranging from 0 to 2 pi, let's go in increasing values of t. Let's start off with t equals 0. So let me just do this. We will say we have t here. three cosine of t for the x component. And for the y component, we have two sine of t. And let's just choose some convenient values. For example, when t is equal to zero, x is going to be equal to three, and sine is going to be equal to zero. That puts us right here for t equals zero. Then if we do t equals, let's say, let's do something easy. Let's say t is equal to pi. How about pi over 2? Well, if t is equal to pi over 2, x is equal to 0, y is equal to 2. This puts us right here. Let's do one more. So we will do t equals pi. And actually, let's just go ahead and fill it out since we're almost halfway there anyway. So when t is equal to pi, x is equal to minus 3, y is equal to 0. Here, let's label the values of t because this is useful. When t is equal to 3 halves pi, x is equal to 0, y is equal to minus 2. And when t is equal to 2 pi, x is equal to 3, y is equal to 0, bringing us back to our starting point. Notice that for increasing values of t, we went around this curve in a counterclockwise direction. So we would indicate the orientation of our curve with these arrows, the orientation being counterclockwise. We've now completed the sketch of our vector function given by 3 cosine of t i hat and 2 sine of t j hat.